الذين ينضموا للاستماع الى راديو بلدي او الراديو العربي الامريكي ويعنى بقضايا الحرب في المحشر. برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر وعبر دبليو ان بي كي راديو 690 اي ام. صباح الخير بلدي، صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا. Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> Good morning and thank you for being with us. Uh, this is Khalil Hashem, editor of EMMichigan.com, the fastest growing digital business magazine in the Middle Eastern communities in Michigan. This show is brought to you in cooperation between U.S. Arab Radio and EMMichigan.com. Welcome to this sunny day in the cold land of Michigan. We thank you for being with us. The number here is 248-557-3300. Please give us a call should you have a question or a comment. We have a great, sh- a pre- great program for you today. We're going to start with a special guest from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Uh, later on, uh, Mona Mackey from Access will join us to talk about uh, the administering of the vaccine at Access. Uh, Dr. Maliko from the uh, Superintendent Schools will be with us to talk about returning to school. And Chief Haddad later on will join us to address safety issues in the community and the vaccine as well. Uh, again, uh, once again, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, it's a great day, and it's March, and uh, the weather is getting better and better. And, you know, the, the, our community is growing in number and strength. Uh, many of our community members are, are, are landing great jobs, and we are honored to celebrate their success. Today, we're talking to a special guest, uh, a guest, uh, you know, um, we're so proud of her accomplishment, uh, Ms. Uh, Saima Mohsen. She is the new top federal prosecutor in Detroit and uh, at, the, at the U.S. Uh, Attorney's Office. She became uh, the active U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan after the current U.S. Attorney or the previous yesterday, I should say, Matthew Schneider stepped down in February. And uh, good morning, Ms. Uh, Ms. Bastin. Good morning. Can you hear me? Thank you so much for being with us, for taking the time to be with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for asking me to uh, be interviewed this morning. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want to say, first, I want to say congratulations, and we're so proud of, uh, of that accomplishment. Well, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, I'm really excited about this position and working in the community. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, before we talk about uh, the the position, uh, tell us a little bit uh, about you. Uh, you know, you were born in Pakistan and and, uh, and you came to the United States, I believe, with your family. Tell us a little bit about you. You know, uh, how you came here and and uh, and who you are. Sure. Um, I immigrated to the United States when I was a young child with my family, um, actually to the New York metropolitan area. My father uh, was getting his degree in New York City and was invited to work here. Um, and so we immigrated when I was a young girl. I lived and worked um, in the on the East Coast, uh, went to college, and uh, decided I wanted to be a, an attorney. Um, and so with the support of my, my family, my father in particular, who uh, was a wonderful, uh, you know, supporter of mine throughout my childhood uh, and my career, I uh, became an attorney and practiced uh, at first in the New York area. And then in 2002, um, we relocated to Michigan, and I've been at the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, ever since. So you came to the U.S. Attorney's Office? Is that why you came here? I did, yes. I came here in 2002, okay. and I have been serving uh, in that office since 2002 as an assistant uh, United States attorney. 
Absolutely. Uh, what, are, what are some of the, you know, before we talk about the, the job right now, what are some of the, like, the highlights of your career here as, as a prosecutor and attorney? Uh, what are some of the, like, the, the bigger cases that you worked on? I've worked on a lot of cases. Um, I've worked on complicated and, you know, uh, organized crime type of cases over the course of the last uh, 18 years. Um, and they, these include, you know, violent crimes, crimes against children, human trafficking, um, fraud, uh, drug trafficking. Um, you know, uh, the, the community that we live in here in Detroit, we do have a very sure. large number of uh, violent crimes that occur. And so I've spent most of my career investigating and prosecuting essentially individuals who are involved in some of that violence. And uh, that includes racketeer-influenced uh, corrupt organization prosecutions, mm -hmm. um, you know, and complicated, you know, types of, of cases. Absolutely, and, and we appreciate your hard work. Now, what does a, a, a U.S. attorney do for, for, you know, for people who really don't understand the, the concept of the job? Sure. So the United States Attorney's Office is the top federal prosecutor for the district. There are 93 federal districts in the United States. And there is uh, a separate jurisdiction for federal prosecution than there would be for state prosecution. So for those mm -hmm. of us who live and work in Wayne County, um, most of the state or local crimes that are prosecuted are handled by the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office or by the state of Michigan's Attorney General's Office. But federal mm -hmm. prosecution is different because we have jurisdiction that is across a larger portion of the state and really across the United States. The law that we enforce also is federal law. Um, and so predominantly, although we work with state and local law enforcement, um, we also work with a lot of federal agencies to enforce those federal laws. Our office also has a civil division, and so we defend claims against the United States, um, civil claims. We defend those. We uh, pursue affirmative civil cases. Um, we have a robust civil rights unit um, in our civil division as well. And so we have a very broad variety of uh, litigation that we handle. Um, our office is very large. We have over 120 assistant United States attorneys that are responsible for handling both the civil and criminal and appellate work for the Eastern District of Michigan. Um, so I, I know it's uh, a long-winded answer, but hopefully that provides a little bit of detail. Sure, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. How much did your job change going from you know, federal prosecutor to now you're the acting U.S. attorney? So for the last um, three years prior to becoming the acting U.S. attorney, I was the first assistant United States attorney, which is essentially, uh, you know, maybe the equivalent might be a chief operating officer. So I was in responsible sure. for managing the office sort of as a second in command. My job has changed in that uh, the United States attorney really is the front face of the United States Attorney's Office, the rep, you know, the United States Attorney is someone that um, is going to be far more engaged uh, with the public. And so I look forward to taking on that role, um, meeting and talking with individuals um, and organizations about issues that are of concern. Um, and so for me personally, it wasn't too dramatic of a change because I've been sort of running the office for uh, the, the past three years, uh, along with Matthew Schneider, who, um, you know, uh, while he was the United States Attorney, I was responsible for a lot of the day-to-day -day operations of the office. Day-to-day, -day, yeah, 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 absolutely. What, what are some of the issues that are really important to the community here? I think uh, primarily everyone wants to feel safe. Uh, we all have um, different things that concern us uh, depending on, you know, where we live and what our circumstances might be. But safety is very important to all of us. And whether you live in a neighborhood where there is violent crime, whether you live in a neighborhood 
you know, where um, there are other issues that are plaguing that community, it's important for people to feel safe. And in order to feel safe, you have to have confidence in your criminal justice system. You have to have confidence in the Department of Justice. You have to know that if you raise a complaint with the law enforcement, that that complaint will be heard, that it will be investigated, and that you will get justice. And so I think that one of the most important things that our society, our community is facing is that we have some uh, diminished lack of confidence. Um, And so I hope that during the course of my tenure, I can help rebuild some of that confidence so that people know that we in the Department of Justice are here. Uh, We want to serve the community. We want to do justice. We want to do it fairly. Uh, We want to do it impartially without any political um, uh, considerations of any kind, and that we have been and will continue to serve in that role so that people can feel safe. So what would be your plan to reach out to people and and enforce that trust? Well, one step is to have conversations like this one. Uh, Another is I have begun reaching out to various communities Um, and having meetings. I do believe that um, perhaps because of the COVID phenomenon, face-to-face interaction uh, has diminished. And, you know, trust begins with something as simple as being able to sit down with someone and have a face-to-face conversation. And so I'd like to resume when it's safe to do so, um, those types of face-to-face communications. We do them on Zoom already, and when it's possible and it's safe to do it, we do them in person. But I look forward to doing more and more of those types of engagements uh, with members of the community, uh, you know, over over the time that I am the acting United States Attorney. Absolutely, absolutely. What, what kind of trends crime-wise do you see rising right now? You know, we're, we're in a really totally different time. This is pandemic time. But still, even though people are staying home, but it's still some, you know, crimes are still going on. What kind of trends, uh, you know, you see and, and uh, you know, what do we need to know about that? So I can speak to some of the um, federal cases that, you know, sort of have, that we've been seeing. I know that the crime trends uh, that impact the community um You know, the Detroit Police Department, for example, has excellent statistics on what's happening uh, in the larger community. And, of course, other law enforcement agencies maintain those types of statistics as well. But, you know, for for us in federal court, we're really focused on violent crime, trying to determine, you know, there's been a tremendous increase in um, non-fatal shootings, and there's been an increase uh, in homicides, not just in the Detroit area, but in a lot of major cities across the country during the COVID crisis. For many years, we had seen decline. Now we've seen sharp uh, increase. And so we're trying to focus our efforts on identifying individuals, groups, gangs that are really fueling that violence, um, because I think it's very important for us to play a part um for the, for the United States Attorney's Office and our federal partners to play a part in working with our state and local partners to get a handle on who and, and which groups are fueling uh, the gun violence um, in, the, in the city and the larger areas. Um, we're also seeing a tremendous amount of unemployment insurance fraud that is associated with some of the relief that was given to us by Congress during the course of the pandemic. Um, Of course, um, we maintain very committed to focusing on protecting our citizens from any sort of domestic or foreign terrorism. We remain committed to uh, making sure that we are focused on public corruption matters, civil rights violations, um, and, you know, of course, um, drug trafficking and some of those other types of offenses are still part of our priorities. Absolutely, absolutely, and we we thank you for all you do and and keeping us safe and and you know as you well know uh, you're an immigrant as a, an as an immigrant community you know and you did address that you know that that trust with uh, you know authorities and then the issue of discrimination 
And, uh, you know, these are, these are huge. Now we're having a bigger issue in our community, and that's the upward crisis. Any plans for that? Anything you can contribute to that to, to help us address that issue? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I, I think I lost you for a second. Okay. You know, the, the uh, two things are important to our community, which is uh, upward crisis and for the youth, and then the discrimination for the you know in the com- you know that community faces sometimes. Anything that you can do to uh, to to help us with that? I think one thing that you know uh, our society is facing again is polarization, mistrust, and whatever we can do to rebuild some of that mistrust as as people in the community. Um, we need to do a good job of listening to each other. We need to do a good job of allowing people's voices to be heard and for ex- expressions of, um, you know, people to be able to, to, to speak to each other face-to-face. And I think that with when it comes to discrimination, when it comes to, you know, trying to break those barriers, the more that folks in, in communities like the Muslim community, the Pakistani community, can take an interest in, in working in a broad variety of fields, engaging with the community as best as they can, I think the better we'll do in breaking down some of these barriers. I do believe that um, opportunities exist for people to take on jobs like, you know, in the law, for example, like what I've done. And I think that as we start to diversify um, and get out there and engage with the community, um, that will help uh, members of our community. Um, it will help members of other communities. And that type of engagement and, and discussion and interaction is beneficial. Um, it's a big problem for everyone, and it's not an easy solution. And sometimes you just have Absolutely. to take, you know, take Absolutely. small steps, do what you can uh, to impact it. Yep. Absolutely. Is there anything you haven't asked you would like to share with our listeners? I... I think that uh, it's wonderful that you have this radio show. Um, I want everyone in the community to be safe. I want everyone in the community to know that the U.S. Attorney's Office um, is here, that we care, that we want to be fair and impartial in the way in which we do our jobs. We believe that we make every effort to do that. And if you have any complaints or concerns, um, you know, bring them to your law enforcement officials, bring them to our office. Um, because we're here to help. I really appreciate your time. Uh, Again, congratulations, and we're so proud of your accomplishments. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Absolutely. You too, by now. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. While we've been staying safe at home, scientists have been on a journey. The destination, a COVID-19 vaccine. This journey began decades ago with research into other coronaviruses. Scientists built from there with months of research and development, cooperation with other experts worldwide, and clinical trials on tens of thousands of volunteers of diverse race, age, and health status. They arrived at a safe, effective vaccine, and hundreds of thousands in Michigan have already been vaccinated. But the next step is ours. We need to get the vaccine when we can, Keep wearing masks correctly and taking precautions until we reach our destination, freedom from COVID-19 and getting back to the lives we love. Discover the facts for yourself at michigan.gov slash COVID vaccine. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bottom serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all CD guidelines and is open every day 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. 
When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, this is Khalil Hashim with the Michigan.com. And I want to thank Ms. Mahsin for being with us uh, from the U.S. Attorney's Office. And, uh, you know, safety is a paramount, is important right now. One of the biggest safety issues is that the vaccine and uh, different organizations in the community are providing that, uh, working with the federal government. And, you know, we have one of them, the best and, and the most important organization here and the biggest, and that is Access. And, and we appreciate everything they do. And they have been providing vaccines for a lot of people. And with us this morning is uh, Mona Mackey. Ms. Mackey is the Director of Access Community Health and Research Center. And good morning, Ms. Mackey. Good morning. Thank you so much for thank being with us. Happy to be here. Absolutely. And, and thank you for all that you do to, to, for the vaccination and, and everything else you do at Access. Thank you. We really appreciate the support. And yes, Access has it's been... Uh, really on the forefront of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, you know, since uh, March of 2020. And, you know, these last uh, couple of weeks have been very, very busy at Access. Uh, on March yeah. 11, we partnered with Meyer. Uh, we were able to vaccinate over 1,300 individuals in one day. Uh, Access was also awarded through the States of Honorability, population age 50 and over with chronic conditions and 16 over COVID-19 uh, pilot projects. So we've been able to vaccinate thousands of individuals. Uh, we continue to work with our state and local officials and health systems to try to, you know, continue to bring on more vaccines so that we can continue this effort in our community and make sure that everyone in our community who wants to get vaccinated uh, is able to have that opportunity. So we're very happy that we're able to do this work, and it's a continued effort uh, on our end. We've had an amazing turnout uh, within just a you know, few days of being awarded the 2,500 Mo Moderna doses. Uh, we are running very, very low on supply. So we're continuing the effort. Uh, this is something that's very important uh, to access and to our community. So we, again, are very happy uh, that we are able to to do this and bring this to our community. Is this an ongoing thing that you know, like we had thirteen hundred for fourteen hundred? Are we going to continue seeing this on 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 you know week after week, or or what's going on? So again, uh, you know, as as you know, the COVID nineteen vaccine eligibility can, is you know changing very very quickly here in the state of Michigan. And so, again, there's a huge effort to get as many people vaccinated as possible. And so, <laughs> across that access, we are continuing to do everything that we can to continue uh, to, you know, vaccinate people to make sure that we have, uh, you know, supplies so that we can continue this effort. So, yes, our hope is that we are going to continue to do this work. Uh, again, we are working with our state and local officials and health systems so that we are, you know, that this, is, this hopefully will be an yeah. ongoing process. Sounds good. How can people sign up? So if anyone has questions or wants an appointment, they can call 313-216-2230. Uh, that's the phone number for our medical center uh, located here in Dearborn. So, again, anyone has questions or wants to get an appointment, I encourage them to, to call that number. Um, also, uh, as these, the eligibility requirements continue to change, 
you know, within a few weeks from now, uh, all Michiganders 16 and over will be eligible to get the vaccine. So this is amazing news. But again, the uh, the only approved vaccine right now for the ages 16 through 18 is Pfizer. Um, so again, uh, there's a lot of effort throughout the state to, to get folks vaccinated. So, you know, what we're going to see now moving forward is even though the state is expanding the eligibility uh, requirement, most healthcare systems and others that are providing the vaccines are not able to schedule folks in a as quickly as folks would like. And so due to the limited supply, so what we're going to expect is that some people may be put on a wait list. So I'm going to encourage, you know, folks out there to remain patient, to try to get an appointment wherever they can. And in the meantime, continue to practice uh, safety precautions, wearing a mask, you know, social distancing, uh, avoid large crowds, uh, you know, the hand washing, all of the things that we've been told to do to remain safe for ourselves and others that we continue to do so. Wonderful. We really thank you so much for all you do, and you, you guys have been pioneers in serving this community. We just can't thank you enough. All right, thank you. And one last thing, I would like to yeah. uh, let our uh, audience know that March 24 at 5.30, Access will be hosting a, a town hall event on COVID-19 vaccines, understanding the facts. So joining us will be experts uh, from Henry Ford Health Systems, from the medical side. We also will have our faith, faith-based community members, uh, Imam Kazaruni from the Islamic Center of America joining us. We, we do understand that, you know, a lot of folks still have concerns. There's still a lot of hesitancy. There's, you know, sure, people who sure. want to learn more about uh, the vaccine, um, so we want to be able to provide that information. And for individuals who would like to uh, join that town hall, uh, they can visit our Facebook page uh, to learn how to register for that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us and, and to give our best to everybody at Access. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a wonderful Absolutely. day. Bye now. We're going to take a short break. Please stay tuned. Are your hands feeling numb? Do you feel pain opening up a jar, turning a key? Are you noticing that your elbow and your shoulder are becoming stiff? Or were you recently injured in your arm? Hello, I'm Dr. Albajit Katranji, and at the Katranji Hand Center, which just recently opened down the street from the Somerset Mall, we can provide you with the latest in hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder care. Visit us at www.katranjihandcenter.com to learn the latest techniques that we have to offer you, and I look forward to taking care of you. Visit us in Troy at 1565 West Big Beaver Road, Building F, or call Katranji Hand Center for an appointment at 248-869-4263. That's 248-869-4263. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, seafood dinners, and they offer special big trays of your favorite food, plus much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab address is 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248-538-9552. That number again is 248-538-9552. And the supermarket is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. Ziad Brand. Quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rigo Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Are you going to start a restaurant or grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Abood now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. 
New concept products and design. New location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Abood, 734-744-9796. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, this is Khalil Hashem uh, and we were talking about the COVID-19 uh, vaccine and now we're going to continue with uh, returning to school. Uh, some of our children have returned to school. We asked uh, 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 Dr. Glenn Maliko, the Dearborn Super Superintendent of uh, Dearborn Schools to be with us. Good morning, Dr. Maliko. Good morning, Mr. Hashem. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time. Sure. Be with us. Uh, so uh, we've been in school for about two weeks, and I know you're busy. You have meetings, and we appreciate you taking the time to be with us. So we've been in school for two weeks. How's it going? Yeah, this is actually the third week of in-person with the phase-in model. i got to okay. tell you, it's going much better than I – in the schools anyway. It's going much better than I anticipated. I've probably been in about 22 schools over the course of the three weeks. Obviously, we're in a hybrid so we did do a phase in, you know, we started, which I think helps and works because it shows our protocols and safety measures are working. And what I mean is the first week it was K2, sixth and ninth grade. The second week we then added uh, three, five preschool, 10th grade and seventh grade. And then we phased everyone in the rest of the, the grades in this week. Um, the students are doing a great job wearing masks, following the rules, social distancing. I have not had any issues with students been fantastic really um in fact i was out front of dearborn high two days ago or three days ago excuse me and all the students were out front getting on buses uh going home um they were outside mind you uh you know there were some adults not a huge adult presence but there were some they were very responsible they all still had the mask on it, it was amazing wow. the students are doing what they need to and i think the reason is because they want to be back in school but we also have a large number that decided to stay home. We call it the Virtual Learning 100% Program. And we have over 6,000. We have about 5,500 secondary students in that. And then we have about another 1,200 elementary. So we're accommodating parents given the COVID situation. Yeah. How, is, how, how are you being able to social distance on the bus? Well, on the bus, it's not possible, um, but the regulations are wearing a mask, and, and we've made that known. Now, if we have lower numbers, then it is more possible, and to be honest, I'd have to check, but with the low numbers at secondary right now, there probably is more social distancing, but the state recognizes that on buses, it's just not possible. Now, I will say we're not yeah, running yeah. buses at full capacity. For sure, we, we do have social distancing uh, we may not have the six feet on the buses, but there is still social distancing, and they wipe it down, uh, disinfect it between every run. We also have these mechanisms. Um, they almost look like a Ghostbuster backpack, but they're disinfectants <laughs> that the operation yeah. staff, that's what everyone calls it. They wear them on their back, the, yeah. the engineer and the custodian. They go around during the day yeah. as students are in school, and it's very safe. It's our environmentally friendly, and they spray the, all the, the touch point surfaces. During the day, constant. I've seen it in seven or eight buildings. We have multiple of those. Um, the other thing I would mention, too, is we now have approximately 2,200 staff members of 2,700 vaccinated. That includes contractors, which has been a huge accomplishment. We were able to get 1,000 doses from the DMC. We appreciate their cooperation. And then Wayne County Health Department um, also provided us with a high number of vaccines. And then we were able to – so that's huge because it gives – our staff protection, which helps our students. The next thing we're working on, I'm talking to Chief Murray, Chief Haddad in Wayne County. Once the governor opens up 16 plus, we're going to be looking to hopefully have clinics within the schools to give the vaccine to the students, of course, with parent permission. Absolutely. And that, Absolutely. But that would start 16 plus. That would be 16 plus because we obviously have to follow the state rules. So, Yeah. yeah. And uh, have you had any incidents? Um, as far as COVID, COVID cases? Yes. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we do. We do, but we have not had any in-school transmission, okay? Um, and okay. I want to make some okay. clarification here, too. Sometimes people see the headlines. So the state, you know, they want to continue to promote having us in school. But one of the things, and I told them, 
is they go out and they call these things outbreaks. Well, an outbreak is under their definition, and they put it on the state site, is two cases. So if you have one student that transmits it to one student, they call that an outbreak. To me, that's not an outbreak. An outbreak is you're closing a school, you have multiple cases, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think it yeah. gives the yeah. public yeah. a false impression, and I have told the state that, and that they said they'll review it. Superintendents have asked them to change that. Now, we have had a few cases, but they've been in the athletics. Not We have not yet had one in-person transmission in the school, other than maybe one way back in September. But we have had a few cases of athletics with the hockey, wrestling, and the um, basketball. But that, that, that season's winding down. So then you would get, you know, Fortson, Dearborn High, um, uh, Etzel were you know listed as outbreaks, but it, it it wasn't even from in the school during instruction. It was from sure. you know at the hockey right. game. Um, so we made sure, sure we clarified that just so parents know. Now the reality is, could we have some cases in the school in the future? Yes. However, I've talked to Wayne County, and the reason why it's much safer in schools is because we have controls. You must wear a mask. You must social distance. You must wash your like we control anybody that comes on our property. We have security protocols and safety measures in place and controls. So that's why it's safe in the schools. Now, we can't control what people do when they go outside of the school, and that's why we advocate with the public to make sure they're also following, you know, get vaccinated, social distance, wash your hands, stop the gatherings, you know, that kind of thing. Absolutely, absolutely. What should we expect in the coming months? Well, I mean, the next few weeks, I am a little concerned about spring break. So I am going to ask yep. people to be responsible because we don't – students are so excited to be in school, you know, elementary kids. Too, we don't want to jeopardize that by having a spike. Now, I know there's another variant in things, but there's also things we can do. You know, be careful if you travel. Be careful getting in groups. It happens to be – there's, a, you know, an Easter holiday over the spring break, so people may want to get together in large groups, but I just would encourage people, you know, to make the sacrifice now or be careful or if they're vaccinated, follow the rules as to who you can get together with. And then we are going to run a clinic with the state on April 5th at Etzel Ford, a testing site um, that we're going to allow community, staff, students, whoever, to get tested right after spring break, just as a precaution. Um, and then I think what I would say long term is this. For the, the rest of the spring, we're hoping to continue with this hybrid model. We may increase it a little, but we what, what we're doing now is just going to help us for next year. Um, and we're going to redesign the vir virtual program a little bit at the secondary level because we want to encourage more students to come in person. But I want to advocate and just help yeah. parents. It's very safe in our schools. We have protocols in place. Now, I can't guarantee you 100% that there's not going to be a transmission. But what I can say is it's sure, less sure. likely in schools than it is anywhere else because of all the things that we're doing. So, Absolutely, absolutely. I want to thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate everything you do to keep our children safe and educated. Uh, Dr. Maliko, I know you're very busy. You have a meeting to go to. I want to thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Always uh, uh, enjoy speaking to you on your show. And whatever you need in the future, I'll look forward to continued positive dialogue. Thank you. Mr. Hashem, take care. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Okay. No problem. We're going to continue. Good one. Thank you. Bye now. And, uh, you know, this is something very, very important, uh, the education of our children. We want to make sure they're safe. And then I hope that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I hope that uh, uh, the studies will tell us a little bit more about whether, uh, uh, you know, kids of different ages, children rather different ages, are able to, take the vaccine, um, and I think there have been some studies recently, Pfizer is doing a study about children of uh, either 9 or 8, um, from 9 8 to 6, 16, those, whether they can they'll be able to take the vaccine or not. I've heard some uh, studies that are going on to figure out whether the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is suitable for children or not. Um, because that's going to complete the cycle. Once we vaccinate most adults, it's important to vaccinate some of the children because we've seen some cases where, where, where the children were affected. And children are one of some of the biggest carriers because, you know, they don't social distance as well as they should, uh, and, and that presents, uh, you know, presents a dilemma. It's not only the school that's really doing its part. Everybody's doing their part. And one of the busiest people 
trying to help with this endeavor is uh, our uh, our own chief uh, Ron Haddad. Good morning, chief. Good morning. That's perfect timing. I just got on. How are you doing this morning, Khalid? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Uh, and I've seen you in different places and trying to help with the vaccine and, and make sure that everything is safe. What do we need to know? You know, we need to know that COVID is still very real. It's very dangerous to our uh, community and our country and the world, really. And, you know, we look... Uh, some uh, urgency at the variants that, that are developing around the world, particularly in Italy and other places. So we have to be mindful that this uh, COVID is not over. That's number one. Number two, I can tell you that the city of Dearborn, with all of our partners, we're doing the very best we can to make sure our community stays safe. Most, most recently, we, we uh, delivered 300,000 masks to every household in uh our city, I want to thank uh, the Wayne County Executive for that. We had 200,000 more masks from Ford Motor Company. We delivered those to every household in our city. And then we started uh, doing the vaccines. To date, we've done over 10,000. And uh, we went out to every senior uh, building in Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Allen Park, Garden City, Redford, Inkster, and Melvindale, because we understand that they're the most vulnerable. We're going to continue to uh, vaccinate the most vulnerable. We're down to uh, 50-year-olds with pre-existing conditions and uh, people who have, uh, you know, other uh, compelling needs. We try to get them vaccinated as well. Uh, the governor's office has announced that on April the 5th, we'll be doing the 16 and uh, over people, which opens up the schools. And uh, I'm kind of... Uh, excited to be doing that, particularly for uh, team sports and, you know, where schools have come back in full force to keep uh, our young people also safe. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We have uh, Jerry on the line. He has a question for the chief. Go ahead, Jerry. Good morning. Mr. Khalil morning. Hashim, thank you for taking my call. And uh, good morning, uh, Chief Ran Haddad. Chief Ran Handad, my question is, a couple of days ago, there was a sad picture. Eight Asian, they were shot to death in those uh, massage barrel in Atlanta. My question to you, Chief Haddad, is your department take any measure to protect the Middle Eastern community through De Dearborn and Dearborn Heights, and in case if there is any copycat for that, I would love to hear your answer. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jerry. Okay, okay. I, 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 can, I can give you a, a brief answer. I can tell you that we take many proactive measures to make sure that all aspects of our community are safe. Um, we clearly understand that we're a very diverse community. That's places of worship, schools, businesses, etc. And I can tell you that we have one of the best... Uh, rapid response teams in the country. God forbid if uh, something were to occur, we could uh, move in in very fast order. And the third thing I can tell you, Jerry, is that we work with our federal and regional partners to obtain and assess any intelligence that would indicate there's any remote possibility of a threat to our community. So uh, thank you for that question. Uh, we send our condolences and our hearts are with the people down in Atlanta, and it's a very unfortunate incident. It is. It is very unfortunate, you know. Uh, as far as the vaccine goes, uh, you know, people going to be vaccinated and all of that, what do they need to know? You know, this is a great question. Uh, first of all, they can go on City of Dearborn, and that's all one word, cityofdearborn.org slash COVID, all in capital letters, and they can make an appointment. It is a very, very, very user-friendly uh, way to do that. And what I would suggest is that, particularly with our older population, for the younger family members to assist them. Uh, and again, let me repeat the cities that we're doing this for. Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Allen Park, Garden City, Redford, Inkster, and Melvindale. And uh, currently, we have used, uh, for the two shots, the, the state and the county have given us Moderna and we also have a 
uh, reasonably ample supply of uh, Johnson & Johnson, which is uh, one shot. And although I want to preface this by saying I'm not a doctor, everything I have read about these three vaccines, Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson, you know, there's huge assessments, but the bottom line is whichever one you can get in your arm first is the one you should do because they're all life-saving uh, vaccines. So my recommendation would be uh, to read up on them if you have any questions. If you want to know if it's appropriate for you and you have a question, contact your uh, health care provider. But my recommendation is that everyone should take the uh, vaccine so that helps keep them safe and keeps our community safe as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, when they get there, uh, there, there are enough staff to, to guide them through and let them know what they need to do. Is that correct? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm not saying this in a boastful way, but the 10,000-plus people that have come through there, they've all marveled at how quick they make it through and how efficient the system is set up. So it's, it's very efficient. On average, you don't spend any more than 25 minutes at our center, and keeping in mind that 15 of those minutes you must sit in an observation area to make sure that you don't have any adverse uh, reactions to the uh, shot to the vaccine. And I can tell you that I don't know of anybody that had any adverse reaction that required anything special. You know, some sometimes somebody will say their arm stings a little bit, uh, rarely, but they'll say they feel a little warmer. That may or may not be because of the vaccine, but most people of all ages are raring to get up and walk away as best they can right after the vaccine. So, again, I want to eliminate any fear of it. You can do your own research for our listeners, but uh, yeah. we are here yeah. to serve them. Yeah. yeah. For those who are still reluctant to take the vaccine, what would you say to them? I, I would tell them to, to take the vaccine, uh, talk to somebody they trust. Don't take my word for it. Uh, talk to somebody that's close to them, but, but take the vaccine. It's a life-saving measure. Uh, we can all think it's not going to happen to us, but... I can rattle off hundreds of names of very close friends and friend and, and people in our region, and everybody knows them. You know, they, they did not have that second chance. So take the vaccine. And, Absolutely. Uh, let's, Absolutely. Let's, get this, let's get this behind us. Yep. Is there anything I haven't asked you that people need to know? No. Uh, we're here to serve you. And uh, I, I might say as a, in my closing that, I'm so grateful to the leadership of Mayor John B. O'Reilly because last year in uh, late January and early February when we started hearing about this coronavirus, he said, you have all the campuses up here on Michigan Avenue, you know, keep me posted, yeah. and he hasn't wavered. Yeah. We, we gave uh, 25,000 tests behind the library last summer, and we're up to 10,000 uh, vaccines at the performing arts, and that comes at, you know, great expense to the city when it comes to revenue and so on. But uh, sure, the, sure. Mayor, the, the mayor realized the importance and the critical nature of this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, and he has given us uh, the support we need there. So I'm very grateful to him for that. Yeah. We have a question for you, Chief, from Miriam. Go ahead, Miriam. Hi. Good morning, Mr. Hashem, and uh, good morning, Chief good morning. Haddad. Good morning, Mario. Yeah, I have a question, like, different than COVID-19. Can I say it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, because you're, Mr. Haddad, very good image in our community and very active, how about that rash in the street at, in the east of Dearborn? I know the mayor is working or the city, and I'm, I'm working with the city, too. But the rash in the east, in the street, in, the, in East Dearborn, it's horrible. Yep. So yeah, the, I, I, the snow is gone for three weeks, and they took the trash, but they didn't, like, sweep the street. Yep. I don't I, like it even to be, like, in this image. You're, I know you're corona and you, this crisis, but must be taking care of another thing. Yep. yep. Let me quickly hey, answer you, Mary, I need you. Excuse me. Just I need you to, to, like, let them, like, do something. Okay. About Thank the you. trash in the street. Right. Look at Warren in Michigan in East of Dearborn. It's horrible. Mariam, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Let, let's, let's, let's give the chief a, uh, a chance to respond. Thank you, Mariam. I, 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 
Thank you, Mario. I can tell you that you're absolutely right. It appears to be that there's more trash after the snow melted than years past. The city does have a very comprehensive plan that will be coming out. It's already in place, and as the weather changes now, you'll see it. Uh, the streets are going to be cleaned. We have uh, public service days Monday through Friday, and you'll see our people out there knocking on doors and posting uh, what's called the NOV, Notice of Violation, asking people to clean up. We'll, we're also going to visit our business sectors, and I'm very confident, as Dearborn has always done, you know, and not too long into the future, you'll see that the uh, the streets are going to be much cleaner. But your your observations are very accurate. They're of great concern to all of us, and we have our marching orders, and you will see an improvement very shortly. Yeah. Thank you, Marian, for the question. That's a great question. Uh, Chief, we appreciate you being with us. We thank you for everything you do to keep us safe, and um, we really appreciate it. All right. Have a great weekend, and it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. Enjoy the first Syrian-style cuisine in Michigan. At Damas Cuisine and Catering, you'll find a wide selection of Syrian foods and sweets in our menu, like frike, hoisi, grape leaves with steak, mashawi platter, hot mahashi, char-grilled kebang, shawarma, and much more. Get super-fast delivery from Damas Cuisine and Catering right to your door. Order online at damascuisine.com forward slash menu and track your order live. Damas Cuisine and Catering. 28841 Orchard Lake Road in Farmington Hills. Call 248 987 4985. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. Welcome back, and thank you for being with us. Uh, and I want to thank everyone who's been on the show today and everyone that called, starting with uh, Ms. Uh, Saima Mohsen, uh, the new U acting U.S. attorney in Detroit. We're proud of her accomplishments, and congratulations to her. And we want to thank her for taking the time to be with us. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Mona Mackey of Access, uh, and I want to thank them for all the great work that they're doing to serve this community. They're doing a great job. Um, it's, you uh, know, all of the people that are trying to help and bring the vaccines to everyone. This is really a monumental task, and, and they're doing a great job. Uh, thank Dr. Maliko and, and his uh, inf the information that he provided in regard to schools and to all the staff at uh, the, uh, the different schools and, and uh, and public service that they're providing to this community to keep our children safe and educated 
and this is really great work that they're doing, uh, you know, not just in Dearborn, but everywhere else. Uh, just amazing how everybody stepped up to the plate in your, this pandemic time. I'd like to thank Dr. Uh, uh, thank Dr. Chief Haddad, rather, for, again, for for him. Thank him personally. Also thank his, uh, his uh, deputies and thank all the uh, front workers, uh, uh, front line workers, such as in law enforcement and, and uh and fire and 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 uh, medical and all of that, you know. They've, they, again, everybody stepped up to the plate and have done a great job in in keeping us safe. Uh, I see Chief Haddad almost <laughs> everywhere trying to help with the vaccine. Um, as he said, there's a lot of vaccines still available. Uh, appointments are available. Um, if you're eligible, go ahead and make an appointment. Uh, if somebody needs help, uh, give him help and take him, you know, take him there. Uh, to to get their vaccines. Uh, I, we're not going to tell you whether you get the vaccine or not. This is a personal decision. We hope that you do because, uh, you know, this is what's going to really tackle that virus and tackle the pandemic and get things uh, the things going uh, for us and things will change for us soon. Lastly, I would like to, I want, I want to thank the people who called, uh, Jerry and Mariam as well. Thank you so much for calling. Great questions. And lastly, very quickly, uh, as you well know, I work in real estate as well, and the market is very hot. It's, I mean, you can sell a home in, in, in like five minutes. So this is, this is how hot it is for prices that you never thought that it would be. If you have a home to sell, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to discuss the prices for you and what you can get for your home. At 313-819-0101. 313-819-0101. Give me a call. I'll be more than happy to discuss it with you. The market is unbelievably hot. It's just amazing. Demand for homes is everywhere, not just in Michigan. Not as, it's just, it's just every, everywhere. It's just unbelievable. I mean, we don't have enough homes. I have so many buyers looking for homes, and I don't have any homes for them. You have a home to sell, give me a call. I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Mike, for a great production, and you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. Enjoy it. Stay safe and uh, practice social distancing. Thank you so much. Bye now.